everybody, let's start that over. Master trainer and wellness enthusiast, Kiona Leah, back with you guys again for another Wellness Wednesday. So welcome. Now, you guys may be able to hear that I sound a little froggy. I've been sounding a little froggy for the last several days on the streams because it is that time of year. Allergy season. Some of us get allergies much more in the fall than we do in the spring. And I happen to be one of those people. The mold with all this extra humidity in the air really does a number on my sinuses and my throat in particular. No fever, nothing like that, but really can feel a difference. So I promised you guys that today I would talk about my favorite thing for sinuses, and that is xylitol. This is the brand that I use. Now, this is not the only xylitol infused sinus medicine that's out there. This is just the one that I use. Readily available everywhere, and it was one of the first ones on the market. Now, part of why this came up, I've been using it now for probably three years at least. And the reason was I really was struggling with these sinus issues and I would struggle with them kind of all throughout the year. And I went to my doctor and you guys have heard me talk about my doctor plenty of times and mentioned the fact that my doctor is a functional medical doctor. So not just medicine and standard prescriptions does he do, but he also does alternatives, homeopathy and nutrition all kind of blended into one. So he really looks at across the broad spectrum what works, not just for symptoms, but what's really going on fundamentally in the body itself. So one of the things that he put me on was this homeopathic sinus medicine for fungal infections. Now I, as a kid, had suffered quite a bit from strep, which can kind of get itself stuck up in those sinuses and such like that and cause later very subtle issues that aren't strep throat but can really kind of keep causing you problems. So he put me on this medicine. Now here's the thing about this medicine. One, it was only available from a dispensary in like Washington state. So it had to be flown across the country. Two, it had to be kept cold. So not only did it have to be flown across the country, it had to be flown across the country in an air conditioned truck and wrapped properly and it had to go back in the refrigerator within 20 minutes of delivery. This stuff was super, super, super sensitive and broke down super fast. And on top of that, it was almost $150 a bottle. So by the time I paid for it and this overnight delivery shipping, all refrigerated, et cetera, et cetera, I was looking at 160 or more dollars a bottle. And that lasted one month. So I did this for several months until my flexible spending ran out and then I couldn't do it anymore and it did not make a lick of difference. Homeopathy can be great and it can be very effective and sometimes it can not work. So finally, after easily $500 in medicine and shipping and all this other stuff, I went, I'm done. I'm going to the health food store and I'm just going to see what they got. This is what they got. So I was like, hey, it's 11 bucks. I'm going to try it. So I bought it 11 bucks. It worked better than my $155 sinus medicine. That was all super special and a snowflake. So you couldn't leave it in the medicine cabinet. You had to leave it in the fridge. So I was so impressed that of course I told my students. Now at the time, one of my students worked at FDA. And if you know anything about anything with people who work at FDA, they generally are very into evidence based information. They want to see the science. They want to see the research. And what my FDA client said to me was that stuff actually passes my standard gold standard for working for sinuses. And I will put a link in the comments below for you guys to the NIH study on xylitol. It's a fascinating study. I didn't read the whole thing. I got to be honest because it just looked at other health benefits of xylitol. Now we are used to xylitol as an ingredient in our food, frequently as a sugar alcohol, so that we can have low calorie, higher sweetened foods. What this study looked at were, what are some of the other benefits of this? It talked about benefits for the skin, not only in consumption, but it was a pretty high number of consumption, like 10% or more of your diet has to be this, 
That sounds like a little much, especially if you've got a sensitive gut, because for some of us with a sensitive gut, uh, this stuff can be a little touchy on us. It talked about obviously some of the benefits to the gut for some of the gut bacteria that it does and does not affect. So there's lots of great information in this study. But when you start actually looking at respiratory health, they looked at a couple things. One, they looked at consumption. Again, 10 to 20% of the diet consumption of xylitol and how or if that could help boost immune health. It didn't show a lot of distinction. There were some studies on certain things like strep itself, kind of funny. And there was one other, and I'm totally blanking, I apologize, on what other, there was another bacteria that it did show that there was some effect, but it was looking at about a 20% solution of this stuff. And that's pretty high. But the other thing they looked at was, what if you aerosolize it? 5% solution in a sinus aerosol. Not only did they see that reduction in the strep strains, but they also did see reduction in H1N1 and more importantly, in airway secretion liquids. They saw a decrease in those. Now, as you think about when it's winter and your nose runs more and you end up with these cold infections, having additional secretions of liquid in your airways is what makes us more prone to infection. So if this helps to dry that out to a degree, especially if you live in a crazy humid place like, mm, I don't know, the Washington DC metro area, this can make a huge, huge difference in reducing your chance of infection. And the study was also showing that there was some effectiveness against some of those seasonal strains of bacteria and virus that actually can cause secondary infection. So still after all these years, this is my go-to. You can actually now find this stuff at Walmart and other places. It's down to like $8 a bottle instead of 11, which is what I paid initially. Highly recommend, really makes a big difference. And I will link that study below for you guys. This is my go-to and I got to be honest, I only use it in the morning. It actually recommends that you can use it twice a day. They recommend you do use it twice a day, morning and night. I only use it in the morning. That's generally when my sinuses are the worst. But the other nice thing I really loved about this versus your over-the-counter sinus medicine, if you ever read those labels, it will absolutely tell you what. Come on, those of you who have done it, what does it say? That's right. It says, do not use for more than three days because what they put in those other over-the-counter medicines is they put a nasal steroid. That's what reduces that inflammation. It reduces the inflammation in your sinus cavities, which feels great. That gives you space for things to drain, which feels great and we can breathe. But especially on these very sensitive, very thin, very delicate membranes inside the, the nose and sinus cavities, you can't use something like that for more than three days because that steroid use causes secondary problems. There is no limit to how often, and it says right on the bottle, right here, it says that you are not limited to how many days in a row you can use it or how often. If I really do have an actual infection, I will use it up to four times a day. I don't think I've ever gone more than four times a day because that's generally all I need. I also generally only use two sprays and I believe the directions actually tell you to use four. It's been a while since I actually read them because I just kind of do my own thing. After, after multiple years of using this stuff, you kind of get used to what your body needs. I am very big into minimal amounts of any medicine I'm going to take so that my body's immune system can do the rest. It's obviously doing its job a little slowly this week, but that I promised you guys I would talk about it and nobody sent me any other questions. So we talked about this this week. What else do you guys want to talk about? Comment below. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and share the pages and the channels. And we're looking for topics for next week. Until this nastiness gets out of my system this week, we're going to keep moving and focusing on what to do to drain and open up all of this upper chest area. In the meantime, I'm Kiona Leah. I want to see you guys move, live, and thrive. So I will see you on the next one.